Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Jimmy and uh, I'm with the General Expert channel here on YouTube. Today I'm working on a uh, brass uh, acoustic guitar nut. And um, what I'm trying to do is recreate this one that's made out of plastic and it's very old. It's uh, off my Yamaha FG75 and that guitar is from the late 60s. And I'll show it to you here. I'm getting some light. So here you can see uh, it's the Yamaha uh, FG75 Nippon Gaki is the I guess the place that it was made out in uh, Japan. Um, but this is a pretty cool guitar. You can see the little made in Japan there on the back of the headstock. Um, it's in really really good shape. Uh, no cracks, no major dings or anything like that. I ended up finding this at an estate sale. Um, it was just sitting there in the corner and they wanted 150 bucks for it. Um, for some reason they knew to write on the label that it was a Yamaha uh, red label. Um, but I don't know who knew to write that, but anyway. Um, pretty, pretty good shape, um, you know, a couple rusty strings on it. It was missing the uh, saddle, there was no saddle in there, so this is a saddle that I threw in there that I had off of another guitar that I have and uh, it worked, seemed to work out just fine. I had to thin it out just a little bit. Um, but all in all, this guitar is in really good shape. It's like a folk uh, bodied guitar, so it's fairly small compared to a regular uh, big bodied guitar. Um, you can see the nut there uh, to uh, tighten it, the truss rod. And um, I haven't touched that yet because the neck seems to be pretty, pretty dang straight. Um, but yeah, I mean this thing is, I've researched it with the um, serial number inside and it seems that the serial number inside is so old that they didn't really classify them correctly from what I've been able to read and that tells us that this is from the late 60s. So um, pretty, pretty sweet guitar, pretty nice find. Anyway, uh, the reason why I have to fix the nut up here is because the one that was on it was eroding away and uh, the, e, the low E string was touching, or I should say the high E string was touching uh, the first fret. So um, I'm guessing this guitar has been restrung a plethora of times and uh, so therefore a simple little plastic uh, nut uh, you know, is obviously going to start eroding away and um, before you know it you got to get a new nut. So. One thing that I like is um, the dot inlays on the fretboard. Um, they're really small, like that old classical style, and they don't start till the fifth fret. So that's really, really cool. I like that. Um, but yeah, I mean the guitar, I've already had it strung up and, and been playing it, and it sounds fantastic. I just want to get a nut on there. And of course I could go buy one, um, you know, from Graph Tech or something like that. And I've actually been trying to figure out which one I need because the width of this uh, fingerboard is one and three quarters. So the ones that Graph Tech lists on their site are like from E to E, it's just a little bit wider on the Graph Tech site than, than the thing that came off here. So I'm just trying to figure out if I should just buy one, which I probably should because it'd save me a whole heck of a lot of time. So the thing is, is that I've already made this brass one here. And it fits in there quite well. But I just did this one last night. Uh, this is the first, first one I did. And I mean, it fits good. The strings fit good. Um, the only problem is, is it's a little tall and a little thin. Um, you can see there, it's not fully covering where the wood uh, is, you know, unfinished. So um, it's a little bit thin. I need to basically make another one that's a little bit thicker. And, um, and also shorter because the strings are hanging off the fretboard pretty high. You can see the difference here. Let me put these close to, let me see here. What's, what can I do? Oh yeah. So I'll put them like that. And you can see how much taller the brass one is than the actual uh, plastic one. So um, I want to, get in there and make a new one. I could just shorten this one down. Just, you know, sand it on some sandpaper and, and bring it down. But, uh, 
Maybe I'll maybe I'll attempt that first. Um, but anyway, this looks really cool on there. I already had it on there with the strings. It looks really cool. It is a uh, hair short uh, as far as width goes, um, but it's not going to really affect anything but the you know aesthetics. So um, I wanted to show you this chunk of brass that I have. Um, I have a couple of these and I just went to my local metal uh, supply store and basically grabbed a, a long piece of this that was just scrap and I bought it for really really cheap but um, I had them cut them into small sections and this is kind of like the leftover but I was gonna make tremolos uh, brass tremolos for um, for electric guitar for my Strat um, didn't really get around to finishing that up so I have a bunch of these and I figured I could use this to you know help make this uh, nut and possibly a saddle if I can figure out how to, you know, get this dialed in, so. All right, so basically I just cut these uh, two pieces off. Here they are, you can see them. I have two blanks now, so if I screw up on one of them, I have another one. Pretty good plan, huh? All right, so basically I'm just grinding away at this one, comparing the two, and going by my scribe lines, trying to figure out, uh, you know, how far I need to go with these things. So, um, it's getting close, but I'm at this point I'm just using a file and just filing, uh, filing it down to shape, you know, little by little, just checking my progress as I go. All right guys, so at this point, uh, it's coming along quite nicely. I'm flattening the surface that's gonna touch the side of the fretboard, and also the surface that's gonna touch the headstock, which is the bottom of it. Um, basically flattening those and making them really perfectly square by just grinding it down on this file here. Uh, the back, on the other hand, I'm trying to whittle down to get a little bit more kind of uh, of an arc to it so the strings kind of roll off of this as after I cut the uh, grooves in there um, but as far as compared to the old one it's coming together really really nicely they look nearly identical at this point um, the brass piece may be a little bit thicker but I'm fine with that uh, I mean, they're pretty much the same height, same width and everything. So I think at this point what I need to do is just do, do a little bit of fine tuning. Okay, so I got the, the, uh, the flat side here that you can see and the other flat side there. So those are going to be right up against the wood. I wanted it as flat as possible up against the wood. And uh, so it looks, I mean, it looks perfect. It's covering the wood that it's supposed to be covering. Yeah. It's not going to be a hindrance as far as the edges are concerned. It feels great. I might be able to take off like a just, I mean, some dust off the sides. All right, so I got the lines marked out for the strings, and I basically, I was gonna try to scribe them with something, but I thought it would be a lot easier just to use a, you know, a Sharpie um, with the ultra fine point. So I just basically lined it up the best I could and scribed the very center where the strings would be. Um, hopefully that's good enough. Hey guys, what's going on? So I finally got this thing about 90% of the way there. I still have to take off a little bit. It's a little too high. My notes on the uh, first fret are just a touch sharp. 
Um, so I need to bring it down a little bit. I can tell that the action is a little bit higher than it was before, just ever so slightly. But um, anyway, that's, look at that thing, man. Look how good that looks. That is, I mean, not only does it look good, but it sounds good too. That is purely just, it was a big giant chunk of brass like I showed you before. And I just whittled away at it, you know, and uh, got it to be a nice looking uh, nut there. And let me just show you the old one that came off. Is this little piece of plastic here. And you can kind of see what I was talking about in, um, you know, where the, like, the low E or high E string, whatever you want to call it, um, was in there. It was just a little too, too low. It was, like, just, it was barely touching the fret, so... Um, needed to do something about it and rather than you know just buying one I thought I'd make one out of brass so anyways I just have to basically take it back off shorten it up a little bit but the guitar is fully playable right now um, let me show you kind of what it sounds like here gonna sell I don't know I might sell e either one of the these they're both great guitars but this one's a Siegel and it is a uh, maritime solid wood series folk HGQI um, it's got the electronics on it this thing I love this guitar um, just awesome guitar uh, but you know when I saw this I couldn't pass it up for 90 bucks and it's kind of like my new uh, toy. I, I can just tell right away um, the action on this guitar is much higher. So I don't have anything left here in the uh, the saddle um, because this saddle actually came out of that guitar and I had Chauvin, Chauvin? Shaved? Uh, this one I, I took a lot off of it but it actually worked out in here um, just fine. Um, but this nut is just too tall so I'm gonna have to bring that down quite a bit to get this to uh, play the way I like it to play. I mean, it's playable now. <laughs> 